Back in the mid to late 2000s, the indie video game scene was still in its infancy. Digital marketplaces were starting to emerge that let small teams of game designers release their games without the need of a publisher or a distribution line. If you wanted to play, say, a Metroidvania style game back in 2004, chances are you're probably playing Metroid or Castlevania. If you wanted to play a Metroidvania style game in 2019, well, oh shit. Most independently produced games at the time didn't really have a means of making any money, and you were usually often a labor of love, sometimes done by just one person. But what if that one person took that love and turned it into anger, into resentment, and his desire to release a game drove him to offer a front row seat to his mental degradation? This is The Legend of Robert Poloni. You know, when I first wanted to make this video, I only really knew about the story of the game he was developing, Bob's Game. But the more I dug into the man himself, the weirder this shit got. Like, Temple OS levels of weird. So in this episode in particular, I want to focus on the story of Bob's Game and the development of it. And then next week, we're going to look into the man himself. And oh boy, you guys are in for a treat. Alright, so let's bring you guys up to speed on Bob's Game. In 2004, Poloni began working on his magnum opus dream title, a game being developed solely by Poloni himself for the Nintendo DS. The dude claimed to have spent over 15,000 hours working on it. Imagine what you could do with 15,000 hours. Build a house, learn several different languages, watch Naruto like twice. However, Poloni was making a multitude of claims around this time, claiming this to be the greatest game ever made and touting himself as a messiah and a god. Trust me, it'll get worse. What we were really seeing of this game at the time, well, it was honestly pretty promising. It appeared to be some kind of 16-bit RPG, grounded in a bit of realism akin to the likes of Earthbound. Hey, I'll give the guy a bit of credit, especially since he's claiming that he has no artistic experience whatsoever. You see this? I drew that. That's a dog. Nintendo hired this man. <laughs> Being a developer himself, Poloni wasn't shy about discussing the business side of the video game industry. He continued to spend 2006 and 2007 working on the game in isolation, with hopes of receiving a software development kit, or SDK, from Nintendo. But, nobody came. When asked about whether he received the SDK, Poloni responded, I asked the Wario World division, and they sent me to marketing. I talked to marketing, and they said apply with the Wario World division. The agreement on the application states I will receive a decision within 6 to 8 weeks. It has been 17 weeks. Someone at Nintendo doesn't like this project, because it blurs the line between homebrew and commercial. Ah, uh, if only homie knew what the future had in store. In 2008 is when things really started to heat up. Poloni commenced a 100 day protest until Nintendo provided him with his beloved SDK. He would be locked in his room with a live webcam. No internet, no TV, a phone, but let's be honest, in 2008 that doesn't mean shit. Just the tools necessary to continue to work on the game. Then a toilet and some food, I guess. This is around the time that I discovered the story, as it was garnering a lot of media attention online. His website was filled with rambling blog posts about seeking revenge on Nintendo, and as time went on, these posts would get more and more delusional, complaining about bursts of paranoia and headaches, almost to the point of displaying bipolar-like behavior. Y'all ever heard of this guy? This guy is called Shigeru Miyamoto. Uh, what about that? Shigesato Itoi. Uh, Will Wright. John Carmack. Motherfucking Hideo Kojima. Well, according to Robert Poloni, he's better than all these creators combined. On January 10th, 2009, Poloni trashed the room he was in, threatened to commit suicide, gave up on the project and the 100-day protest. For, like, a day. Someone on the video game board on 4chan was able to find Poloni's contact information and contact local authorities, to which they said he was doing just fine. Doing fine, eh? Things are starting to look a little fishy. It doesn't help that on February 1st, he showcased a video of himself at the Nintendo World store in New York, putting down mock cases of his game, as well as littering the place with his calling card. Alright, yeah, boss game, let's do it. Alright. I thought homie was chilling in his room. Then, just five days later, 
something unexpected happened. Nintendo actually got back to him. And... So now you're probably asking me, well, damn, Trash World, what other crazy shit would you have done after that? Well, nothing really. Because it was all a show. In 2009, he came out of the woodwork to announce that the whole protest was a publicity stunt. The trashing of his room was staged, the vandalizing of the Nintendo store was fake, and the whole time the game he was making was about these events. The story of a kid trying to self-publish a game in a world run by corrupt game developers. Was this the truth all along? Well, bits and pieces of the protest being staged definitely were. But whether this was always his vision for the game, I'd say that's still up for debate. Apart from releasing a demo of the game, this would be the last we'd hear from Poloni for quite some time. Over <laughs> the magical land of Kickstarter. I'm gonna just quick fire this one. In March 4th of 2011, Poloni launched a Kickstarter for his very own portable console. Set to play a plethora of 16-bit indie titles with its own app store and cost no more than $10. Much like the sea of false promises that is Kickstarter, this console was quietly shelved and never heard of again. Now, on November 25th of 2013, Yo, that was my 23rd birthday, yay! He launched yet another Kickstarter, but this time, it was to actually finish the now infamous Bob's game, which he managed to earn a modest 7% of his goal. But you know what? He actually did it. He actually released Bob's game to the public on January 1st of 2014. In fact, it's available right now on Steam for free. I remember being so interested in the story growing up, but I didn't follow it all the way through. I didn't know the game got released. I'm actually going to go play Bob's game. All right, all right, all right, let's give this a shot. It's just Tetris. 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 Tetris. It's just 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 fucking Tetris! Thank you guys so much for sticking around until the end. Don't forget, we're going to be checking out the man himself, Robert Poloni, next week. So be sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to check that out. And then don't forget the like, like button, like, like button. Don't forget it.